Hey folks, it's Matt Easton here and I'm here again with Dr. Tobias Capwell from the Wallace Collection and we're in um, uh, Dennington at St. Mary's Church. And uh, really, I just thought this was an opportunity to talk about the transition from the Great Bassinet, which was the really the favoured knightly helmet in England uh, up until around 1450 or the 1450s. And then from the 1460s onwards, the Salé, um, with or without a movable visor and usually worn with a beva on the, on the lower half of the face, really completely took over, didn't it? Pretty much. Um, why do you think that was? Well, there's that question again, why? <laughs> why is the most common question, and it's the hardest one to answer. Um, the, the salad in England was known from around 1430, 1435. I think the earliest English depiction I've been able to find is something like 1435. Um, but they didn't, they didn't really get a lot of traction until the second half of the 15th century in England. Mm. Um, but from the 1450s onwards, they're increasingly the ubiquitous universal mm. helmet in England as they were pretty much everywhere else. Now, it should be said also that English knights, the guys, and actually men at arms in general, uh, but mostly knights, um, often uh, also use the armet. Mm. And I'm, I'm now working on the second part of the English Armour publication, and I've been, I've been finding a number of references to Armets in England. And sometimes they, they often refer to my Lord Salat and his Armet. He's having them both decorated at the same time by the same craftsman. But you often get this sense that, you know, so, you know noblemen had a Salat and they had an Armet. And that, mm. makes, a sen that makes sense because you have one for lighter you know, fighting and, you know, more lightly armored situations, more mobile, etc. And then mm. you've got your heavy, heavy combat helmet as well. So in that sense, maybe the Armet took over from the Great Bassinet and then this became more useful as a more, as a lighter, more yeah. versatile. It, it, it makes sense. More I mean, comfortable. One, you know, one device is never going to do everything. Mm. You know, one automobile doesn't do all the jobs you need it to do. Uh, and you know, no one sword will do every every type of combat. Mm. And similarly, I think there was a recognition, a general acceptance in the second half of the 15th century, that you know, one helmet is not going to do everything you needed to do. Let's have a couple of helmets that address different areas of the need, and we just wear the appropriate helmet in the in the right circumstances. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing this topic examined more thoroughly in your. Yeah, next yeah, I'm volume. Um, but uh, it is an interesting topic and something that I might talk about in future videos as well. This this move over from a very very different type of helmet, the Great Bassinet, which was seems to be the universal knightly helmet up until mm -hmm. around 1450 or the 1450s, um, and then Salé's just kind of took over. It's a very stark change, mm -hmm. and and I think a very interesting one as well. Um, but anyway, thank you, okay. Tony. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.